What's up, everyone? It's Scotty with MoneyVest. So in this video, we are going to be talking about the PCE numbers. So personal consumption expenditures came out earlier today and also talking a little bit about a very interesting report that goes over the last 10, 12, 14 years worth of data and basically tracks down the market's expectations of interest rates and what the Federal Reserve ended up doing um, in the future, right? So, And that is a very interesting insight because the report pretty much suggested the market is almost always wrong about what the Federal Reserve is going to do next. So we're going to talk about all of that because next week is the Fed meeting and Jerome Powell's speech and interest rate expectations are pretty much pegged at around a pause and of course three rate cuts going into next year so we're going to talk all about that as always if you enjoyed this video find it helpful make sure that you drop a like that's all i'm asking in return is you subscribe to the channel and link to our discord and patreon is going to be down below if you're interested in joining and of course getting access to all the members only private videos again trading view charts uh, all the uh, alerts and analysis and updates are, are going to be shared and the stock analysis report um, and the intrinsic value spreadsheets as well so links are going to be down below there is a 16 percent annual discount available for another three to four days so this right here is going to be the personal income and outlays so you know, this is the Fed's preferred measure of inflation, as we have talked about in our previous videos. This is what they really track. They don't care about the CPI. They don't care about the PPI. They care about the PCE. And the personal income did grow, but at lower rate at 0.3% versus 0.4%. And personal consumption expenditure, right? So PCE on a month over month basis coming in a little bit hotter than what the expectations were at point. Um, 0.7% and then PCE price index increasing month over month at 0.4, which was again, slightly hotter than what the expectations were on a month over month basis. But of course, year over year, the index is still increasing 3.4% in line with consensus and slightly lower, 10 basis point lower than the previous number. And core PCE, when you exclude for food and energy, the index increased 0.3% month over month in line with expectations and core PCE year over year also up 37 in line with expectations and also uh, lower than the prior revised number of 3.8%. So we are slowing down, but at a significantly slower pace, right? So it's 3.7, 3.4% for PCE is still well above the Fed's target. Um, and for those reasons, of course, there's a possibility that the Federal Reserve, uh, you know, continues to be on this path of potential interest rate hikes or at least staying higher for longer, because not only do we have, again, inflation a little bit more elevated, but we also do have economic growth coming in at very strong levels at 4.9%. We got the GDP numbers yesterday, uh, which we covered in another video. And of course, jobless claims and unemployment continues to be at really, really low levels. And that's basically paving the way for the Fed to keep doing what they're doing. Now, consumer sentiment increased slightly, so up a little bit over 63.8. Uh, and if you take a look at year ahead inflation expectations, this was actually quite interesting, right? So if you take a look at one year ahead inflation expectations, that came in at 4.2% right? That's actually higher than 3.8, right? If you take a look at the consumer sentiment. So that in itself should tell you a little bit more about where the consumers are and they are not expecting inflation to cool off or come down anytime soon and for it to be a problem, obviously, for the economy. And that at 4.2%, I mean, you can better believe that the Federal Reserve is not going to be, uh, you know, cutting rates anytime soon. But of course, the market is expecting, uh, you know, about a 99% probability that rates are going to stay where they are. And in, in other words, a pause into next week's meeting. And we're going to stay there until May of next year and then rate cuts beginning in June all the way through December 2024. So in other words, you know, three, four meetings uh, in next year where we are going to see three rate cuts and we're going to settle in at four and a half to four point seven five percent for for interest rates. Unless, of course, something breaks, there's a recession, there's deflation, whatever that that could happen that obviously the, the Federal Reserve's expectations will change. With respect to uh, with respect to interest rates, now this right here is the um, analysis and the report. The market is almost always wrong about the about what the Federal Reserve will do next, and Wall Street economists is warning and taking the 2024 rate cut expectations with a grain of salt. Uh, says Apollo's Torsten Slock. So one Wall Street economist has a reminder for investors for next week's Fed meeting, and this is because the market's perception of what the Fed might do over the months and years ahead is often incorrect sometimes wildly so, while traders often have a good idea of what the Federal Reserve might do at the next meeting. Beyond that, it is mostly guesswork. So in other words, this 99% probability, that may be accurate, but anything beyond that is mostly guesswork from the market and for traders, uh, in, in, in other words, what the Federal Reserve is going to do. And this right here is the chart that, that basically goes over uh, the actual green line, which is the, the line itself, is the federal funds rate and the dotted lines are the federal funds futures at different 
point in time. Basically, these are markets expectations of what is potentially going to happen in a few years. So what you'll notice is this is going back as far as 2008, 2009. Uh, at that time, there were many market participants, including traders and investors and Fed funds futures, pointing to rate increases right uh, in their expectations but we did not even see any hikes we again multiple times in the past we've saw we've seen markets expectations of rate increases that never happened and then eventually it did start to increase but you can start to see the divergences from that dotted line over here for example 2019 the expectations were that rates were going to increase and flatline a little bit there were expectations that rates were going to increase but not at the at at the aggressive rate that we saw them at. Uh, and this right here were also several expectations that rates are going to slide sideways instead of sliding all the way down to 0%. Uh, again, during the current uh, hiking cycle, you can see so many discrepancies with respect to what the Federal Reserve's uh, expectations are for Fed Funds futures versus where the reality is, right? And this is what the market, so basically the dotted lines are what the market represents. I mean, this is what the market collective aggregate is what the market's pricing in versus the reality, which is the green line itself. And if there is a significant amount of divergence between the expectations and reality, then that's how much we may need to price in in our markets, uh, you know, markets analysis moving forward. So to give you a simple example, let's just say that the market's expecting three rate cuts next year and, and the Federal Reserve doesn't give us those rate cuts, then there has to be a little bit of a repricing, not even a little bit, a lot of repricing in the markets to adjust for that new reality that, okay, even, even in 2024, rates can stay higher for longer at over 5%, um, even though the market's anticipation until at least today is that we're going to see three rate cuts, right? So so that, that's, that's really where we are. If, if the Federal Reserve's expectations versus market's expectations diverge away significantly, that just opens, um, you know, the door for more repricing risk from a market standpoint because right now if you take a look at the S&P 500 you know we're basically in this downtrend lower highs and lower lows we've been selling off on the back of these higher interest rates and higher yields I mean today big tech is starting to see a little bit of recovery but yesterday uh, you know there was a lot of rotation out of big tech over to some other parts of the market and nasdaq is in a correction territory coming down to that support of 12,550. so from its recent highs you know we are down over 13 percent and from all-time highs we are once again in a bear market down a little bit over 21 22 percent so so of course interest rates and inflation are the main key drivers for you know the entire market and a lot of individual stocks as i mentioned in my previous video that end phase tesla you know, a lot of these companies are going to be de dependent on where rates go. As unfortunate as it is, they are going to be driven by something that they don't control, which is the macro environment and the challenges related to interest rates and inflation. Uh, but that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. Um, from a trading perspective, yes, we are in a little bit of a downtrend. We are coming down to a support. So, you know, there's a possibility that, you know, given how oversold we are at the moment and the volatility is still not spiking right now, it's still not close to 25 or 30 levels. And that's where we really get to higher percentiles. Uh, but right now we're still sub 20 and percentage of stocks trading below their certain moving averages uh, right now at the moment. We are looking at, you know, 14, 18%, 26%, 27%. So we're still about 70 to 80% of stocks that are trading below their moving averages, but we're not at those extreme levels yet when we're looking at over 90%, right? Once we get to over 90% for these numbers, that's when from a technical perspective and you combine that with the volatility and the oversold levels and not to mention the markets continue to sell off trading down to that support, that's when the risk reward becomes very, very attractive from a long perspective Um within that trend but we have to still account for the idea the fact that we're in a downtrend lower highs and lower lows and this is going to be a little bit of a challenging environment um, for the markets given how high yields are so once again if you take a look at the 10 year uh, sitting at over 4.86 we're starting to see a little bit of that pullback but uh, but only time will tell where the top ends up being for treasuries so hope you guys enjoyed this video found it helpful if you did make sure that you drop a like don't forget to subscribe to the channel again link to our discord and patreon is going to be down below 16 percent annual discount for another three to four days uh, links going to be down below as always happy investing and i'll see you all in the next video